Hey y'all, hey. Welcome to TKTV. I'm your host, Tracy Knight. I put the TK in TKTV. I know, I look a hot mess, but when do I not look a hot mess? But it is what it is, okay? I'm at home. I'm teleworking today, and I have already completed all my meetings, and I didn't have to be on camera. If this is your first time here, welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm so, so, so glad that you guys are here. Um, let me check something because you guys have been just blowing a sister up. At least that's what I call it because, you know, I, I went from seven people to we now have 396 subscribers. So, yay. So, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Um, if this is your first time here, yes, it is time for the Ozempic update. So sit back, relax. I got some stuff I want to share with you guys today. I don't come as often as I used to because, you know, things have been doing its thing, a little even flow. But when we have a little, you know, we got to share those things because that's what I'm here for. I'm sharing my experience with you guys in the hopes that I can help at least one person who's sitting in the back of the room going, I, I, I wonder, because that was me. I wonder, and I've learned so much about what I've been going through with the Ozempic and other things that, you know what, why not share? Because it's going to happen to me anyway. But if I can help you understand why it's happening to you, then I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Okay. And if you've already been here, if you're already part of the 396 subscribers, I love you guys. I really, really do. I'm going to make this kind of short and quick, hopefully, because I'm on my lunch hour um, and I'm a little hungry and I'm trying to debate whether I should go on and do the right thing, get me some yogurt and some grapes, or should I have a bacon, egg, and cheese sandwich? I'm just keeping it real. Okay, so since we last spoke, um, I, I told you guys where I was. Um, I was on the one milligram dosage of Ozempic. Like, like I said, if you guys are new here or you're just starting your Ozempic journey, chances are you're at the 0.25 or you've probably just transitioned to the 0.5. Or maybe, just maybe, you're at one. Okay. Um, but let me give you a little bit of a, I don't know, Ozempic for crazy people. I'm not going to say we're crazy because we're not. We're just type 2 diabetics, right? Okay. Some of the side effects of Ozempic is vomiting, nausea, diarrhea, constipation, uh, fatigue, headaches. Those are kind of like the normal ones that, that, that most people will have. Now, there are some who don't have any side effects. God bless them. And I mean that one. Um, and they're lucky to not have those. But those are the most common uh, talked about um side effects that we go through when we start Ozempic. And some people, I pray for y'all, uh, have those side effects ongoing, okay? Um, I, right now, am at one milligram, and I'm not having any of those side effects. Not really. I had a little bout with the whole constipation thing I had been avoiding for a long, long time, and I guess it was like, okay, my time. So I had a little bout with it. I've combated it. It was it, it was bad, but it wasn't as bad as I'm sure other people who, who have had it or are going through it. Um, but it wasn't good. It wasn't. Okay. And um, there, then there was the diarrhea. It is what it is. Some of that, for both of them, I'm thinking maybe it was something I ate or I wasn't eating. Maybe I wasn't getting enough fiber because I'm eating a lot of fruit. But am I eating a lot of greens? You know, like the lettuces and the greens and stuff like that. Not not. Not so much, but I'm going to start incorporating those in my diet as well. Um, so I haven't really been doing the side effect thing as much, right? Um, but I still keep my Pepto-Bismol on hand, on standby, my ginger ale, my ginger chews, my my nausea tea. All of that is on standby on the outside chance that there's something that's not feeling quite right. And I'm not trying to go and be sick about it, okay? So if you're having those side effects, it's normal but if it's abnormal or very very painful or very very uncomfortable please talk to your doctor because I'm not a doctor nor do I play one on YouTube okay um and let them know what's going on maybe the dosage or maybe it's just not for you because I'm finding out that it's not for everybody okay put a pin in it I'm coming back to that um I saw um my endocrinologist today via video call she's a great lady great lady and we talked about a lot of things. I had questions about carbs because my telehealth nurse, y'all, I see a lot of people about this, okay? My telehealth nurse was telling me that, you know, let's cut back on your carbs because your your sugars 
are in range. Your blood pressure is fine. I'm losing the weight. I'm still in the two teens, y'all. My lowest this this past week or so was 213. Yes, um, it's not 213 today. But then again, I haven't had a, you know, a waste deposit, if you will. Um, and I feel a little bloated. So it might be a little water waste thing. But anyway, I'm still in the two teens. Um, I'm happy about that. And she's happy about that. What we're not happy about is our A1C. Now, while it is going down, it's creeping down. I mean, it is creeping down. Went from 8.6, last blood test from 8.4. I'm not sure where it is right now. Um, I'm not due to get another blood test until the, the 18th of December. Because that's when I go in to get some other tests done. And so, we're hoping that it's going to be lower then. In the meantime, in between time, my endocrinologist has changed a couple of things. And I was kind of fearful of it. So, Y'all let me know. The one change, one of the changes that she's made is now that she's taking me off the one milligram. She's increasing it to two milligrams. Now, my body has gotten used to the Ozempic, okay? And remember that pen? It, we're going to talk about that too. But um, I, was, I was fearful that if I increased to two milligrams that I would have to revisit some of these side effects. And God bless her. She ain't gonna lie to me. She said maybe, but maybe not because I had been taking it so long. I, the transition may not be a problem for me. So my question to you guys, if you have been increased from one milligram to two, did you notice any transition or uh, issues? Did you have any problems with the reoccurrence of the side effects? Were they worse? Were they like, oh, okay, expected and didn't last long? I mean, do I need to go out and invest in my ginger ale? You know, get me a couple of more bottles of Pepto-Bismol and tablets, because I will. Okay? Just let me know. Put it in the comments. Let me know how you did with the transition to two milligrams. Um, especially if you were having no side effects at this point. Okay? That's that. So, she increased that. She um, changed my metformin back, because now I... <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me. In the past, I was taking 2,000 milligrams a day. Hold on. One in the morning, 1,000 in the morning, 1,000 at night. And then my primary care doctor said, you know what, based on your blood work, yada, yada, boo, we're going to take you off the metformin in the morning, okay? And we're just going to put you on the 1,000 milligrams at night. I was super happy because any pill that I do not have to take is a victory for me. Well, my endocrinologist, okay, who's a little more familiar with the diabetes part of my life, okay, she wants to try something. She wants to just say, okay, look, since we're going to be upping the Ozempic, I want to put you back on the 1,000 in the morning and the 1,000 in the evening. Plus, okay, she's kind of going to pull back on the Jardians. All right, so even though the Jardians and the Ozempic was a great cocktail, she kind of want to sit makes to see how this is actually working for me as far as lowering my A1C. All right, um, so you know, increasing the metformin and the Ozempic, we may not need the Jardians. Which on the plus side, I, I feel her on that one because that side effect of the yeast infection, no bueno. Mm -mm, we, we're not liking that. Um, so we're going to see how taking Jardians out of the cocktail is going to affect the A1C. We're, we're really trying to find a happy a happy place um, with my medications so that we could get all the numbers to go where they are. So that the sugar levels, the, the A1C, the weight, all of that can get to a point where we can get to a maintenance level and not a preventative level, if that makes any sense. Y'all know what I'm saying? Has anybody got to maintenance level? Again, that's another question. Drop it in the comments. Right after you like, share, and subscribe, drop it in the comments. Let me know, have you made it to maintenance level? What's that like? What What are you taking? And I know everybody's on an individual journey. We're all on the same road. Like, we're all driving down 95 to get to Disney World. Some of us are driving an SUV. Some of us are driving, a you know, a car. Some of us are riding with someone else. However you're getting there, we're all on 95. But I want to know how your journey is. Let me know how you're how you're working with that if you're on maintenance mode. I'd like to know that. Um, what else did she tell me? Because I was taking notes. Okay, she up the, up the grease, uh, increased the Ozempic, the Jardins. Now, she does want me, she doesn't really want to take Jardins completely out right now. 
um, what she wants me to do is do just 10 milligrams because I'm taking a full tablet. I guess we just the 25 milligrams. And so she said to cut back to the 10 milligram um, of it. Maybe that might even help with the yeast infections. And we're going to see how that works in the cocktail. So my bad. She's not taking me off it completely, but she's giving me a, a prescription for just 10 milligrams of uh, the low dose of Jardian. So we're going to try that. And again, the metformin is twice a day. And I'm following up with her in late January, probably early Feb February, because by that time I will have taken some new lab work, um, which is November. So December. she'll be able to see that. And we can, you know, take it from there to see how the little cocktails and everything are going to work. So in the last 30 days, we found out that my glucose levels are 75% in range. And um, like I told her, you know, it only goes high when I'm eating or after I eat. I really do try to check it anywhere between an hour and a half to two hours after I've eaten. Um, and on the times I probably eat when I'm not supposed to eat. I, look, I keep it real with my doctors. I tell them I eat when I eat. And when I'm not eating, I let them know I'm not eating because I'm not happy about the fact that I'm not eating. I'm eating, eating, but I'm not eating like the way I want to eat. And I told her, like I told all the other doctors, I ain't no rabbit. I ain't eat no rabbit. I ain't eat like no rabbit. But I am doing better. Okay? So there's that. Now, remember that pen I told you about? Stick it to the side. About, you know, how things are affecting you. Your your side effects and, and things like that. Are you at maintenance? Okay? Here's where we take the pen out. I'm watching CNN as I've been watching CNN since that fatal day. Moment of silence. Anyway, I've been watching CNN, and then up pops Dr. Gupta, uh, Gup, Gupta, yeah, Sanjay Gupta, yeah, that's him. He was saying, and he has a special on Sunday night at 8 o'clock, and I think that's 8 o'clock Eastern time, is Ozempic right for you. So, you know, it caught my attention, and he was saying some of the things that people are having, some of the issues, and they're not necessarily all bad issues that people are having with Ozempic uh, or the semaglutides. And that being um, some of the side effects that people are having, some of them are severe, some of them are not as severe as, or they have built a tolerance. Now, that's where my ear really started hustling, you know, ear hustling. The tolerance build up, which makes people think it's not really working because they're not seeing a change in numbers or anything else like that. And should they stop using it? What happens if they stop using it? And he's going to go more in depth on that on his special Sunday. So I'm going to be tuned in. At least I'm going to try to be tuned in to see. Is Ozempic right for me? So we can all find out if Ozempic right for you. But when he said tolerance, it hit me. I'm thinking, am I at that tolerance level? Is that why my A1Cs are not going down? Though my, my sugar levels are within range. 75% of the time, um, the weight is it's going down in little bit step by step, but you know, I gained it step by step. So, you know, um, but it's the A1C and the, and the sugar levels for me. So I was wondering, have I built up a tolerance? Have any of you guys built up a tolerance? Has your doctor told you that you've built up a tolerance and that's why they may be switching you out, increasing your dose? Um, my endo didn't say that's why she's increasing my dose. She's just increasing my dose because she wants to see if that's going to help with the A1C and the weight loss. Because they seem to like be slow walking the way to the light. You know what I'm saying? So we're going to try that. But I was thinking, do you really build up a tolerance so that now it's not working? And even if you are going to build up a tolerance, is it only at the earlier doses, the lower doses? Do you really build up a tolerance even if you hit the highest dose, which is two milligrams? And this is of Ozempic. I'm not sure about Munjaro, but I know Ozempic is what they were saying, what they were talking about. So has anybody here gotten to two milligrams and noticed that you've plateaued? Ooh, I mean, you just poof. Weight's not really going anywhere. Uh, glucose levels, which were fine, are still not going any further. And your A1C has decided to take a vacation, telling you nothing. Ain't telling you where it's going, when it's coming back, or what. That's kind of, kind of where I think I am. I'm, I'm not sure. I really am not sure. So, I'm going to go ahead and do what she's telling me about, yeah, his special is Sunday at 8 o'clock Eastern Time. Okay, 8 p.m. Eastern time. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and follow her directions. But the funny thing is I just got a new needle with the one milligram. Um, and I just took a shot on Sunday. 
I'm not sure how soon the two milligrams is going to be here, but she said start taking it when it gets here. So I'm thinking I may have one more milligram shot that I'll be taking, which means this whole brand new one is going to be, I don't know, because I know I got at least two, maybe three shots left in the old one. I don't know. We'll see. I'll let you guys know. And then question, if you've been transitioning to a new dosage and you pumped up or anything else like that, what did you do with the old stuff? What did you do with the old needles? You know, I'm just, I'm just asking. Um, I think that's it. I, I really do. I think that's it. I'm, look, I don't know what I'm going to have for lunch. It's either going to be the bacon, egg, and cheese or a yogi and some grapes. Oh, no. I'm, I'm getting a little hungry. And I try not to wait till I get hungry to decide what I'm going to eat. But looks like the daughter over there might be putting a couple of eggs out. Oh, no. Might be able to get an egg or two. I might just eat the eggs. Leave the bacon. I don't know. We'll see. I'll let you guys know. So in the meantime, in between time, and if you haven't already done so, like, share, and subscribe. I'll be right here next time with the Ozempic update. And um, let's see where we are on this journey. And let's do this together because I, I care about you guys. So if I'm helping one person, I'm doing it. I'm going to keep doing it. Um, if you've got any questions, concerns, suggestions, please drop them in the comments below. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.